Can I ask you a question? Why do you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't like getting sick. The virus will die. It will be easy to not catch it. Keep my family safe and keep playing soccer. Because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine. To keep safe and strong. Be like happy, having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. Let's whoop it up for these moments. Made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the cheering going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. In the face of COVID-19, staying healthy is important. And now the same is true as we face the flu. Influenza has the potential to infect millions, putting lives and the healthcare system at risk. Fortunately, it's easy to protect yourself. The flu vaccine is safe and effective, and with COVID-19 still spreading, it's essential. To see how you can hit this virus head on, visit michigan.gov flu. Now that the vaccine is available for children five and up, why do you recommend it? Kids are part of the community and they can spread COVID. We're seeing both healthy children getting sick from the virus as well as children with underlying health conditions. They can easily bring the virus home to other people that are vulnerable and make them sick as well. This vaccine can change that and keep children safe. It's essential that your children get vaccinated to protect them, to protect your families, and to protect those in the community around you. Let's savor these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the dining out going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Let's relish these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the festivals going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Can I ask you a question? Why do you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't like getting sick. The virus will die. It will be easy to not catch it. Keep my family safe and keep playing soccer because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine to keep safe and strong. Be like happy, having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. Let's whoop it up for these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the cheering going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. In the face of COVID-19, staying healthy is important. And now the same is true as we face the flu. Influenza has the potential to infect millions, putting lives and the healthcare system at risk. Fortunately, it's easy to protect yourself. The flu vaccine is safe and effective. And with COVID-19 still spreading, it's essential. To see how you can hit this virus head on, visit michigan.gov flu. You're listening to your radio homes from the Megacast, 89.3 WBLD Orchard Lake and 88.1 WBFH Bloomfield Hills. Today's edition of the Megacast begins now. Welcome to 
to the MegaCast, our live local daily TV, radio, and streaming show looking into all things Michigan. I'm Tyler Keeft. Today we'll be talking to a number of people about topics of interest and importance to Michiganders like you. Let's begin with what's making headlines today on CivicCenterTV.com's local news page. Our top article comes from Mike Wilkinson at Bridge, Michigan in their coronavirus tracker. For the first time since the midsummer, no counties in the state of Michigan are considered at high risk for COVID-19 transmission, that according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Just two Upper Peninsula counties remain in such a uh, ranking as of last week, but, they're, uh, but before they were then downgraded to medium risk transmission. Across the U.S., just under 70 counties at 67 in total are considered by the CDC to be at high risk of COVID-19 transmission at this time. That is the lowest mark since April. That being said, Michigan health officials have reported higher numbers of COVID-19 hospitalizations over the past week with 1,151 hospitalized. That's up from a week ago when that number was at 1,000. 104. Also making headlines today on CivicCenterTV.com's local news page from the Detroit News is Hannah McKay. Eaters rejoiced in Detroit over the weekend with the official reopening of Lafayette, Coney Island, following a shutdown by the local health department. The famed restaurant passed inspection on Friday and was reopened by Saturday, with loyal customers making an immediate return to the Detroit staple. After rodents were found, the restaurant in the restaurant and reported to Detroit's health department, Lafayette had been closed since September 7th. They hired an outside professional cleaner to restore the restaurant to code and eradicate the rat problem. Additionally, Lafayette worked to fix broken tiles as well as holes in the restaurant, which allowed rodents to enter in the first place. Now it's business as usual, says cook and manager Ali al Hamni. Quote, Everything's done by the code, so in two weeks, I don't see anything. No cockroaches, no rats. Now we'll keep it clean, keep everything by the code, and keep everything fresh, updated, and that's it. We'll start from there, and closed quote. Good to see this Detroit hallmark in the food community back and stronger than ever, it appears, after reopening over the weekend. Finally, making headlines today on CivicCenterTV.com's local news page from the Detroit Free Press's Chandra Fleming, get ready for snow in the Upper Peninsula. And while the snowy season is set to kick off with quite the show also in the upper in the UP, according to WLUC-TV, the snow was set to begin overnight on Sunday and continue all throughout today and into Tuesday. In total, anywhere from 6 to 12 inches is expected from this early season storm. And in some higher elevation communities, like in Marquette and Baraga counties, that total could be upwards of 16 inches to two feet by the time that this storm passes. With that, concerns for travel on the UP's roads are rising. In addition to snow, wind speeds will also affect drivers as they're expected to be between 20 and 25 miles per hour with gusts of about 35 to 40 miles per hour. And near Lake Superior, those wind gusts could be upwards of 50 miles per hour. So if you need to go out, do it early, take your time, and of course, bundle up in the Upper Peninsula. Expect delays as, as well on roads in the UP due to this mass of snow. Big snowstorm to start off the season in the UP. Hopefully that's not uh, informing us of what our full snow season across the state of Michigan is going to be like this winter if it is. Well, we better bundle up and get ready for quite the winter ahead. All of those headlines make news today on CivicCenterTV.com on our local news page, along with links to COVID-19 updates from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, and the Oakland County Health Division. We have a great program ahead on this Monday edition of the MegaCast. Coming up next, we'll talk banking with Ashley Chambers from Chief Financial Credit Union. You're watching and listening to the MegaCast. Now that the vaccine is available for children five and up, why do you recommend it? Kids are part of the community and they can spread COVID. We're seeing both healthy children getting sick from the virus as well as children with underlying health conditions. They can easily bring the virus home to other people that are vulnerable and make them sick as well. This vaccine can change that and keep children safe. It's essential that your children get vaccinated to protect them, to protect your families, and to protect those in the community around you. Let's savor these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine.
Keep the dining out going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Let's relish these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the festivals going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Can I ask you a question? Why do you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't like getting sick. The virus will die. It will be easy to not catch it. Keep my family safe and keep playing soccer. Because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine. To keep safe and strong. Be like happy, having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. Let's whoop it up for these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the cheering going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Welcome back to the Megacast, our live local daily TV, radio, and streaming show about all things Michigan. I'm Tyler Keith. Learning more about our program on our website, civiccentertv.com slash megacast, where you'll find more information on all of our partnering stations and find all of our full shows and each individual interview on demand, civiccentertv.com slash megacast. Joining us now on the Megacast is Ashley Chambers. She is a Director of Business Development at Chief Financial Credit Union. Ashley, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Appreciate having you on. So we, uh, of course, know there are a number of different banks and, and banking institutions that people can uh, work with, can, can put their money in, and, and can uh, provide a lot of different services to them. And uh, also among those banks are credit unions. And credit unions have a very interesting history and a very interesting philosophy, too, that differs from some of these banks. Can you take us through a little bit of the background of credit unions and, and how they differ from traditional banks? Yeah, absolutely. One of the foundational differences between a credit union and a bank is the not-for-profit aspect and the for-profit aspect. So banks are a for-profit institution, which means they have a large group of customers and a small group of shareholders that get the benefits of being banking and, and having those sort of relationships. Credit unions are a not-for-profit, so every single one of our members is a shareholder. That's why credit unions will historically have the lowest rates on loans, the highest rates on deposits, and we're more community engaged and involved within the communities that we service as a whole. That comes back to the foundation of credit unions being people helping people. Uh, way, way, way back when a group of individuals got together and they said, you know, enough is enough with these big banks trying to take away our funds and charge us unnecessary fees. And they came together, they pooled their own funds, and they were able to loan those out to individuals that needed it. And then as a return, they did the deposits. Now, we've graduated a bit since then, especially Chief Financial Credit Union. We were founded out of a toolbox on the Pontiac shop floor in uh, Pontiac, Michigan, for a group of GM employees. And since then, we now have our headquarters in Rochester Hills. We hold four other branches. And, you know, I'd like to say we still hold our uh, hearts lie in the toolbox, but we're able to expand and service a few more individuals now, much like credit unions as a whole. We now have the ability to service many individuals. It's not so stigmatize and it's not so um, reg regimented about where you have to be located to be a member. And at this at this moment in time, so many so much of the focus in the financial realm is on inflation and the way that that's impacting our communities and, and impacting our economies locally, uh, statewide, certainly federally and around the world. In terms of the credit union, um, we, we've, we know that the Federal Reserve has already 
hiked rates about 3%, uh, interest rates about 3% in total so far this year. And it's expected that by the end of the year, they could raise that another 1%. That means higher interest rates. Uh, but does that mean for, for those that are going to your institution and other institutions that you're seeing more people put some of their money into their savings as opposed to maybe investing in the market because those interest rates are higher and they're going to get a higher return on them than they would before? Absolutely. We've seen the market fluctuate in and out of our favors. And unfortunately, when it hits, it hits hard. And especially with these upcoming times and the times that we're facing right now, the main objective of credit unions is to keep our membership stabilized during those unstable conditions during those turbulent times. And the best way to do that is to support local within your financial institution and have those funds sit within a financial institution at a stable rate. A savings account is a great way. There's also share certificates and CDs. And kind of going back to what I just said, credit unions are going to have the best rates on any deposit that you put in, especially if you can put it into a CD. And there's truly no better way to lock in your funds than to have that with a stable rate for a 12, 15, 18 month term while the market is is going a little bit haywire right now. And in addition to, to being able to you know, store your money in your savings account or manage your money in a, in a checking account, what are some of the other services that are provided at, at Chief Financial Credit Union? Chief Financial Credit Union is truly a one-stop financial shop. So we have every sort of product and services service that you need to get you from birth to retirement. So we have those savings accounts that are built for members that are up to the age of 21, and it's called our Super Saver account. And they will earn a special interest rate for being, for being a member of Chief Financial up until the age of 21. And within that, they are able to establish a banking relationship, which is huge. Um, a lot of people fall into the patterns of, you know, banking where their parents banked or banking at the place that's located right on the corner. And there's really no need for that with all the online services. We consider our website one of our virtual branches as well. And one of the most perfect ways that we do that is through our checking account, which is a 5% checking account. You can earn 5% on your balance in your checking account up to $5,000 just for doing the everyday banking that you already do. Again, that goes back to feedback that was from our membership. They said, this is a product or service that we wanted saying, hey, I don't know if we can lock our funds in for a year, for example, for that CD that I had just mentioned. However, we want to do our primary banking with you and we're going to be able to do that and pay our members a specific rate. That is one of the best in town that I've seen and it, it's a phenomenal rate. Being a one-stop financial shop, you also have to offer the loan part of things. So we have every type of loan you need, auto loan, recreational loans, those fun vehicles that we all love, and um, unsecured loans. So a lot of people want to get out of that credit card debt and that, that never-ending cycle of debt that they feel, and we'll be able to take that on via an unsecured loan and get those rates in a, a nice pattern of consistency because a credit card is unsecured debt. So that rate is going to fluctuate as the market fluctuates. So you could be signed up with a rate of 8%. And then by the end of the year, with the rates that have changed so much, you're looking at being closer to 20%. And that is outrageous. Whereas if you get an established unsecured loan, you can absolutely have that amazing rate for the longevity of that loan instead of that fluctuation that you'd see, which is more often up than you go down with interest rates on those. More information can be found and get in contact with Chief Financial Credit Union at chiefonline.com. That is chiefonline.com for more information. And you can uh, find all the, all the local contact info you, you need, as well as more information on their locations to chiefonline.com. We're joined by Ashley Chambers from Ch the Director of Business Development at Chief Financial Credit Union on today's edition of the mega cast. You mentioned, uh, of course, credit unions, uh, their, their difference between traditional banks is that they are not for profit organizations. And uh, in addition to that being a, a tradition of credit unions and certainly of chief financial credit union, you also work with many other nonprofits and other organizations and initiatives in the local community as well. Can you tell us about some of those different initiatives and other nonprofit partnerships uh, that chief financial works with each and every day? On an individual level, this is why I do what I do. This is what brought me into the credit union organization, the credit union world, and what will keep me here for the duration of my career. The ability to give back to the community in such a substantial way. So that does mean a monetary value, but that also means engaging your time, engaging your effort, 
having your mission statement and your core values truly align with nonprofits within your communities that you service and give directly back to them. We pride ourselves on being able to take care of our members, our communities that we service, and the businesses located within there and alike. That also includes our nonprofit friends. So specifically for Chief Financial Credit Union, we are the official credit union of Leader Dogs for the Blind, which is headquartered in Rochester as well, right down the road from ours. And we are the official credit union for Rochester University, formerly Rochester College, also located in Rochester, Michigan. Those are two of our bigger partnerships. However, every single partnership we have is big. Just to mention a few, um, October seems to be a very busy month, which is a great thing for me and my role because every day is different and I love it. We were able to partner with Fleece and Thank You for their annual Make a Blanket Day for Oakland County 2022, where they aim to break a world record of making over 2,000 blankets. I believe they fell a little bit short, but were able to make over 800 blankets and get those to local um, local children in hospitals that, that really need a comforting moment being able to give back and support people in their time of need really lies at the core of what she financial does and although we service that in a monetary value we can also partner with organizations that service that and fleece and thank you services that for a group of what i would consider one of the most needed and, and heartfelt group of individuals when you see a child in the hospital it is it, it, it touches you in a certain way so to be able to partner with that organization is huge um, uh, we just had our Gilda's Club Bras for a Cause event, which celebrates the breast cancer survivors, and they are part of the Metro Detroit chapter. So we were the presenting sponsor for that event. And that really allows us to celebrate the life and the continuation of people coming together and again, supporting each other in a time when they need it the most. That is truly what Chief Financial Credit Union aims to do. Those are just a couple of our big ones that we recently had. However, I, I could go on for days. We are active within the school districts as well. So the Rochester Community School District, for example, we partner with them. We're the presenting sponsor for the Hometown Hustle Race. So it starts and ends in our parking lot and it really gives the community a chance to come in, raise funds for the schools and celebrate with each other. And this year they added a color run component. So that was fun because a lot of it started in our parking lot. So our parking lot was a beautiful rainbow color for a day or two. And I, I couldn't complain about that. It was, it was awesome being able to bring the community together in such a positive aspect and give directly back to the schools. It's, it's very, it's, it's very much needed. And it's, it's a powerful movement to see a community come together in such a positive aspect. More information can be found on chiefonline.com, chiefonline.com, or call them 248-253-7900, 248-253-7900 for more information. And Ashley, you mentioned that uh, Chief Financial Credit Union was founded in Pontiac, but it has two, no, two new locations now in Rochester and Troy. Tell us about those branches and, and why Rochester and Troy for those locations. Absolutely. Our original headquarters was in Pontiac, Michigan. As I had said, that's where we were founded. And we still hold our, that's one of our busiest branches is in Pontiac. We moved our headquarters to Rochester or Rochester Hills, depending on where you're standing in the building. Um, we moved there in 2015 and really uh, wanted to give back to the community. Around that same time in the early 2000s, there was a change within credit unions. Um, as a whole. So they used to be very specific in their membership and you had to fall within a very specific field in order to become a member of, of any credit union. And each credit union was a little bit different and, and Chief Financial was no different. However, when those laws were changed and updated, we were able to expand our field of membership. So in order to really drive that home, we wanted to come to Rochester and really make an impact on the community, start to give back to the community as a whole, rather than a segmented group of our membership base now that we were able to do so. So our hearts still lie in Pontiac. We give back so much to that amazing, bountiful city. We have our new branch in Rochester which is a branch community center and what I've lovingly called it our chief financial campus. So we have our main building, which is our headquarters, which will hold all of our amazing um, accounting department, our call center, everybody that really makes the credit union tick behind the scenes, they're going to be in that building. And then in our new community center and branch, which is located 
literally right in front of it. You take a, a staircase to it. And um, that will be our new branch with our amazing new drive through as well as the ability to have a community event. Holds up to 75 people. And then there's three smaller offices that hold up to four people if you want to have a private meeting. There's a table along the center that holds up to 20 people that you can have a little get together. We have a lot of communities uh, members that come in and utilize the office spaces and plan to utilize the office spaces while they work remote. Uh, it's a nice change of scenery. And then, of course, we have our conference center, which is probably the most beautiful room in the entire building. It's all glass windows. You have a great shot of downtown Rochester and off to the other side, you have the ability to go on to an outdoor porch and really get some fresh air. And this time of year, you'll see the Christmas lights coming up in downtown Rochester for the big bright light show. And it, it, it's it's absolutely stunning at night. Um, it's, it's one of a kind. It, it truly takes your breath away every time you see it. So being able to have that sort of view is phenomenal. And our branch in Troy is coming as well. That's going to be at 16 in Rochester Road. And that one is our, what I like to lovingly call our newest project, but with our longstanding partnership with the Troy Chamber of Commerce. We've found more often than not, and we realized this years ago, that a lot of people either live in Rochester, Rochester Hills, and work in Troy, and vice versa. So in order to be able to properly service that field of membership and be able to uh, meet their needs on a personal and business level, we wanted to open up a location in Troy, uh, a connection branch, if you will. That office also has the ability to have a community center. It holds up to about 15 people. And we have a, we have a lot of organizations through the Troy Chamber of Commerce that want to utilize that space and have that well, for lack of a better word, back in person feeling that we finally all are craving and want to get out of that virtual world and, and be back face to face. And there's no better space to do that in one that has enough space for you to still have your own personal zone, but come together as a group as a whole as well. More information on Chief Financial Credit Union can be found on chiefonline.com. Ashley, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Chiefonline.com is the website, the phone number 248 253 79 Zero, zero. We'll take a break on the Megacast. When we come back, we'll stay in the Rochester and Troy area and head over to Oakland University and talk with one of their visiting professors and a director of one of their upcoming plays in their theater department that will be beginning in just a couple of weeks. That's coming up next. You're watching and listening to the Megacast. In the face of COVID-19, staying healthy is important. And now the same is true as we face the flu. Influenza has the potential to infect millions, putting lives and the healthcare system at risk. Fortunately, it's easy to protect yourself. The flu vaccine is safe and effective, and with COVID-19 still spreading, it's essential. To see how you can hit this virus head on, visit michigan.gov flu. Now that the vaccine is available for children five and up, why do you recommend it? Kids are part of the community and they can spread COVID. We're seeing both healthy children getting sick from the virus as well as children with underlying health conditions. They can easily bring the virus home to other people that are vulnerable and make them sick as well. This vaccine can change that and keep children safe. It's essential that your children get vaccinated to protect them, to protect your families, and to protect those in the community around you. Let's savor these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the dining out going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Let's relish these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the festivals going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Can I ask you a question? Uh, Why do you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't like getting sick. The virus will die. It will be easy to not catch it. Keep my family safe and keep playing soccer because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine to keep safe and strong. 
be like happy having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. Welcome back to the MegaCast, our live local daily TV, radio, and streaming show about all things Michigan. I'm Tyler Keeft. Learn more about our program on civiccentertv.com slash megacast, where you'll find more information on all of our partnering stations across the Great Lakes state, including My Michigan TV. Joining us now on the MegaCast is Rachel Stevens. She is a visiting professor of theater at Oakland University and the director of the upcoming production of, a new, of the new musical, A New Brain. Rachel, thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Happy to be here. Yeah, glad to have you on with us as well. So you're a visiting professor at Oakland University. Tell us a little bit about your background and what brings you, what brought you to Oakland? Sure. Um, so uh, I'm an artist uh, originally uh, coming from New York City. Um, I came as a visitor last semester, um, which was originally a contract for the semester, fell in love with the school and the faculty, um, was fortunate enough to be asked back, and now I'm here for the year. Um, so I'm really lucky that I get the opportunity to direct a main stage production this uh, this year as well. And it's a new production too. It's called mm -hmm. A New Brain. It begins mm -hmm. uh, in late October, October 27th through the 30th and November 3rd through the 6th, uh, when these performances are. Sorry, November 3rd through the 6th is A New Brain. October 27th through 30th is She Kills Monsters. That's correct. Brain. Yes, they're opening very soon. We're, we're right, right next to each other, so a lot of theater to go to. Right. Plenty of theater happening at Oakland University. <laughs> Oakland.edu for more information and for ticketing as well. A New Brain premieres on November 3rd at 8 p.m. as a Thursday night. So, Rachel, tell us about A New Brain. It's an interesting new musical uh, that will be beginning in November at Oakland University under your direction. Tell us about the story and, and what makes it so interesting for you as a director. Sure. Yeah, well, it's it's actually um, not particularly a new story, in, but but the really exciting thing um, is that we have the opportunity to do the revival version that premiered at Encore um, in New York City in 2015. Um, but written by William Finn and James Lapine, um, it's autobiographical to the playwright, um, William Finn, the main character's name is Gordon Schwinn, so you can see. Um, but uh, this was immediately after um, what seemed to be an operable brain surgery um, for the playwright. He had what is called an artiovenous malformation of the brain. Um, and this happened right after winning the Tony Award um, in 1998 for falsettos. Um, and while in process in the hospital, James Lapine, his collaborator, said, you should be taking notes. Um, and ultimately, after his recovery, um, sat down at the piano and songs poured out to what eventually would become a new brain. So an interesting topic for a musical. Um, but what's so exciting is that it's a, a comedic, sometimes sardonic, sometimes, um, you know, really uh, sarcastic, but heartfelt exploration of recovery and new beginnings. And it's interesting, too, because when you have a play that's like that, uh, it, it's, it, I would imagine it's tough to navigate uh, all those different emotions and all those different genres too that are taking place within us yeah. generally a, a, a comical musical and, and a look into this time of the playwright's life. So for you as a director, how do you balance that uh, with your actors and, and uh, uh, bring that out on the stage without really embellishing all these different kinds of performance that go into a new brain? Right. No, that's a really wonderful question. Um, so one of the things that we have um, uh, as a part of our production is uh, a dramaturg, um, Madeline Daunt, who is a student, who's also my assistant director, and along with her advisor, David Graham, we've been doing a lot of research, um, dramaturgy, basically on the context of what it really means to go through this kind of traumatic event. We've done interviews with folks who've experienced similar um, uh, surgeries and um, gone into um, talking to the medical team and medical department at the school. So we're balancing what we know um, in terms of the real experience with the writer's lens. And one of the conversations we have often with the actors is, so the writer went through this really traumatic event, but what he chose to write about was the spirit of recovery, new beginnings, reconstructing what legacy really means and the healing power of art. And so it's our responsibility as artists to hold both of those things at the same time and honor the playwright's mission. So we talk about both often in rehearsal and how we honor the characters through that experience. 
We're, we're joined by Rachel Stevens, the director of A New Brain at Oakland University and visiting professor in the Department of Theater. On today's edition of the Megacast, A New Brain premieres at Oakland University Thursday, November 3rd at 8 p.m. with shows on Friday the 4th, Saturday the 5th, and Sunday the 6th. More information can be found at oakland.edu uh, for tickets as well. Oakland.edu. Uh, and they're, they're also available tickets on etix.com, etix.com uh, for more information. And, and now that we're in a different part of the pandemic too, uh, where there's not so much necessarily distancing that goes into uh, rehearsals and goes into different discussions for preparation for these plays and certainly for the performances as well. How have you seen over the past year really as we've more and more merged out of the thick of the pandemic and, and really been back in the more traditional of a landscape for theater and for other forms of entertainment, that that's affected the actors or that the pandemic and the lessons they learned from acting during the pandemic have affected their performance uh, here with a new brain. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's certainly affected them, right? I mean, you know, before, I mean, last year at school, they were able to do a production, um, a couple of productions, but not going on skates, right? We're still taking a lot of precautions because we're singing in a small space. Um, so um, we have to be super careful about the actor's health and the health of the audience. In terms of how they feel and the work they're bringing to the table, I think it only makes them more excited and hungry to tell stories because they're just so delighted to be together. Um, and this piece in particular, I think, is just such an important piece for this moment because it's about community. It's about heart. It's about building something new coming out of a place of adversity and re-examining what's really important to us. And I think that's really resonating with our students. And I think it will really resonate with our audiences. Theater is a communal art form. It's, it's about being together and sharing space. Um, and I think being able to do a piece like this right now is the perfect time for our audiences to come back together. More information, again, can be found oakland.edu. They also have a great uh, article about these upcoming performances, both A New Brain and the show that precedes it, She Kills Monster Monsters, at oakland.edu slash OU Magazine to learn more in the Oakland University news about both of these performances. We're joined by Rachel Stevens, visiting uh, visiting. Uh, professor of theater at Oakland University and the director of A New Brain, premiering November 3rd at Oakland University. More information, again, oakland.edu as well to purchase tickets. Rachel, a few more minutes with you today. Anything else we should know about uh, this performance of A New Brain or the approach that you and, and your actors are taking, your students are taking to making this performance a rousing success and telling this really interesting story in the really interesting way that it's written? Sure. Um, I think one of the most exciting things is we're doing it in the lab theater space in Varner, which is a small black box, which means that we're really going bare bones with it and really focusing on the actor's craft. So, um, of course, the place, the space will be transformed scenically, um, but we're really focusing in on the intimacy of the piece. Um, there's a lot of direct address where you're speaking directly to the audience, so they're involved. And we really love uh, the fact that the space is small, um, it's intimate, you're right there with the actors and you're a part of the story as we go along. So I think that will be a really fascinating piece um, at play. Um, and, and I would also say too, um, these actors are putting their heart and soul into these characters and bringing a lot of their identity and experience at play. So I think you'll get to know them as individuals as you will get to experience and honor the characters. More information can be found on oakland.edu to find tickets and to learn more about the theater program, oakland.edu. Rachel, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Again, A New Brain premieres at Oakland University on November 3rd. The first show is at 8 p.m. Then Friday, November 4th, also an 8 p.m. show with matinees and later shows on both Saturday and Sunday, November 5th and 6th at 2 and 8 p.m. Oakland.edu for more information. We'll take a break here on the Megacast. On the other side, plenty of fall fun happening in Traverse City. Mike Kent will join us from Traverse City Tourism coming up next on the Megacast. Let's whoop it up for these moments, made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the cheering going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. 
In the face of COVID-19, staying healthy is important. And now the same is true as we face the flu. Influenza has the potential to infect millions, putting lives and the healthcare system at risk. Fortunately, it's easy to protect yourself. The flu vaccine is safe and effective, and with COVID-19 still spreading, it's essential. To see how you can hit this virus head on, visit michigan.gov flu. Now that the vaccine is available for children five and up, why do you recommend it? Kids are part of the community and they can spread COVID. We're seeing both healthy children getting sick from the virus as well as children with underlying health conditions. They can easily bring the virus home to other people that are vulnerable and make them sick as well. This vaccine can change that and keep children safe. It's essential that your children get vaccinated to protect them, to protect your families, and to protect those in the community around you. Let's savor these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the dining out going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Let's relish these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the festivals going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Can I ask you a question? Uh, Why do you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't like getting sick. The virus will die. It will be easy to not catch it. Keep my family safe and keep playing soccer. Because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine. To keep safe and strong. Be like happy, having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. Welcome back to the Megacast, our live local daily TV, radio, and streaming show about all things Michigan. I'm Tyler Keeft. Learn more about our program on our website, civiccentertv.com slash megacast, where you'll find more information on all of our partnering stations across the Great Lakes State, including My Michigan TV, and find all of our full shows and individual interviews on demand. Civiccentertv.com slash megacast for all of that. It's a great time of the year to travel all across the state of Michigan, see the fall colors, and experience all the great fall activities in all the different regions of the Great Lakes State. One of the favorite locations to go for all these activities is Traverse City. And joining us now on the megacast is the public relations manager for Traverse City Tourism, Mike Kent, with us again on, on the show today. Mike, thanks for joining us. Hey, always my pleasure. And you know what? It's, it's one of my favorite times to travel the state also. Yeah, it's a great time of the year, and now we're really seeing fall colors at its peak uh, here all across the different different areas of Michigan, and especially as you get into the northern UP, uh, the northern Lower Peninsula, and into the the UP. So, tell us about Traverse City and some of the best locations in your local area to see some of those fall colors, especially now when they're really blooming at their best. Well, I tell you, I was driving around the the area this last weekend, and the colors were phenomenal. I'm looking out my window right now, and we got a northerly breeze coming off of Grand Traverse Bay, and it's picking up the waves that are hitting the break wall. In the background, I'm seeing these these crimson colors and yellow colors and the trees and the hills surrounding the area. Uh, it's spectacular. I mean, it's a rainy day today, although it's clearing right now, and the, the sky is looking absolutely beautiful. And... Um, that's kind of what we're seeing in the area. I, from what I understand, it, when you go more inland, Tyler, uh, they're almost past their peak. But right now, along the the lake shore, um, they're 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 not quite at their peak. Parts of it are. I know I saw some uh, some pictures and video from Crystal Mountain, and I think they were at their peak this weekend. I mean, there's still time to see the color, but. Um, what we're seeing around here in Grand Traverse Bay uh, is is pretty close. Uh, probably within the next few days, we'll start seeing the peak. So this is the time to come up here and take the M22, which takes that loop around uh, Lelanau County, 
and then go up Old Mission Peninsula, uh, and you'll see some absolutely spectacular colors. Um, and I know I, I did a little bit of driving over the weekend and, and saw some of that. And like I say, I can look out right now over Leelanau County, and there's a lot of color out there right now. So there's a lot to do and see in this area. You and I have talked about it before, Tyler. And, um, you know, just doing the drives, if all you had time to do is to come up here and do the drives, uh, it's well worth it because you have these mature trees that are kind of hanging over, especially M22. Uh, and it creates this little umbrella as you're driving. And then on one side, you'll see either Lake Michigan or Grand Traverse Bay, and the colors are just exploding. And it's, uh, it's, it's really a special kind of year for us. And it's also a great time of the year for a lot of fun. At the end of the month of October, people looking for some Halloween activities. And you, you can travel the state and also find some of those fun Halloween activities too. Make a long weekend out of it e even. And, and Traverse City is a great place to go to celebrate the Halloween festivities. Tell us about some of the fun that's happening in your local area for this Halloween season. Sure. Well, you know, you've always got the trick-or-treating that's going neighborhood to neighborhood. But but aside from that, there, there are a couple of really cool events. One is the, the annual zombie run. And what is it, the 14th year this year for the zombie run. I know I've, I've been in it a couple of times. And you're, they, they really attract thousands of people like that hop on this. And it's not just going for a run. It's a 5K run. But it is getting all decked out in the Halloween garb. So, yes, there are zombies on this run. There are skeletons. There are, you know, it's... <laughs> There are dogs that are dressed up in skeletons and, and uh, everything along the way. Uh, it's just a fun family activity. It takes place at Right Brain Brewery um, and uh, do that 5K loop. And it's just a, a fun kind of atmosphere. It's not as serious as, as uh, some competitive 5K races. I mean, you can take it that way, but it's more how you're getting dressed up for the for the race and uh you know mummies and mommies and mummies and they're they're all there and then on that same day so that so that takes place on uh the 29th of this month that same day they have the trick-or-treating in downtown traverse city and so that you see the kids getting dressed up and going and then walking to the different stores and and trick-or-treating there it's, it's always fun to watch the kids getting getting dressed up and uh taking advantage of, of uh, um, all the candy that's available out there too. So, uh, and plus there are communities like Frankfurt has a, a trunk or treat going on that weekend. Also, that's that's a fun thing that's happening. And and boy, if you got kids and you want to travel up to Traverse City uh, for that weekend, it's it's really a fun time to do it. Yeah, great time of the year to visit Traverse City for a number of different activities. The fall, one of the best seasons. Uh, in that area of Michigan overall. After the Halloween season and a lot of fun activities for families and for the kids, a couple of weeks later, you're going to have some some fun that's really mostly only uh, for, it really only is for the adults. But before you get to the Traverse City Beer Week, before you get there, first you have Bell's Iceman Cometh Challenge. That happens on November 5th. Tell us about that and how people can participate. Huge, huge event. It, it's, it's, yeah. It starts in Kalkaska at the airport, and it's a 30-mile it's a point-to-point um, mountain biking race. And uh, I believe they've got like nearly 5,000 adults that are participating. And um, I want to, I want to say about 300 kids that will be participating too. I think they have a, a shorter run for the kids. Um, but it, it, it's a challenging bike ride. It's a mountain bike ride that, that like I said, is, is 30 miles. It's, it's highly competitive. You're getting uh, athletes from really around the country and some foreign countries that will show up for this also. Um, and you know, they are challenging trails and it's not like everyone starts at the same time. They are timed starts, um, uh, that, uh, so that you're not having 5,000 people on the same trail at the same time, because that would not end well. Uh, <laughs> but that, that has been around, this is the 33rd year for that, for the Iceman Cometh Challenge. Uh, and it will attract a lot of people to this area, and it's always a it's always a fun event. I've I've never participated. I'm not that good of an athlete. I have been there for the event, uh, and it's just a it's even if you just want to watch them take off, uh, it's really kind of a fun activity to to see that happen. So yeah, thirty third annual. Um, and when did you say that was, Tyler? Uh, also, also happening after that, it's the 33rd <laughs> annual that can be found at iceman iceman.com. And then the next week over, 
or a couple weeks after that, shortly after that, is the Traverse City Beer Week, also coming up November 11th through the 18th. Really big event. And you and I have talked about the, yeah. the, the, whole, the whole beer. Uh, right now, uh, we are in the running for uh, one of the, uh, this is by USA Today, they've got a contest, top 10 list. Uh, last I saw, we were number two as the best small town beer scene in America. Um, like I said, we were number two last. Last time they did this contest, we ended up with number seven. We're better than that. We really should be number one. You look at who we're up against. We really should be number one. There is, and you and I talked about the creativity that goes on in this area when it comes to the beer scene here. There, there are small batch uh, breweries. So, so you've got some creative brewers that they're not afraid to try different things. We, we talked about one brewer at Right Brain Brewery. He came up with this ingenious idea. Let's put a cherry pie in his brew. Uh, and, you know, the hardcore beer aficionado say, what are you nuts? And uh, <laughs> it's, it's usually, it's a seasonal beer. They, do, they run it in the summer. I don't think they have it now. But like I say, it's a whole cherry pie that they put in it. And I have had it before, and it's very good. But the, the, the main thing is we have brewers that aren't afraid to try different things, to try different seasonal offerings. And, and that's what you'll see here. You know, there'll be some that you'll say, there's no way I'm going to try that. And don't. You know, there's others that, hmm, that sounds interesting. Let me try it. So the whole idea of Beer Week, and, and, and let's talk a little bit about how this works. So it is a, it, it's a, a mobile passport. So you put it on your phone and um, you check into a, a bunch of different uh, breweries. So, um, you know, through all this, we're saying, you know, do it responsibly. You don't have to go, uh, you know, one day to do it all. It's an entire week. And, and each location, then you use your mobile passport to, to check in. And you do five of those, and then you can uh, get a prize at uh, Traverse City Tourism, which is a My Hoppy Place t-shirt, or there are other beer-themed things that you can do. And if you come up and you stay the weekend at, at one of the hotels, uh, you can also register at the hotel to, to win a beer-themed vacation getaway that includes $200 at, at uh, w one of our participating um, uh, uh, hotels along with beer themed uh, uh, beer beer themed gifts that go with it. Um, and the whole concept of it is to is to let's try the creativity that takes place, not just in the breweries, but also the restaurants because they will pair up different food that goes with the different brews. So through this all, uh, we we always encourage people to you know do it safely. Understand that uh, you know you might need a designated driver, or we have so many uh, wine and beer tours that take place. You can always hop on one of those and and let somebody else do the driving. This is never a matter of drink as much as you can. This is a matter of taste the craftsmanship that goes into the different brews, and through it all, find your top favorite or your top five or your top 10 favorites, you know, the ones that appeal to you most, because what, what appeals to me uh, with a brew might be totally different, Tyler, than what appeals to you. So, uh, so that's what beer week is all about. Uh, you can, you can register now and go on to Traverse city tourism to uh, traversecitytourism.com, find the mobile passport, just, just plug in uh beer week and you, you can find the mobile passport that is available even as we speak and you can see all the different breweries that are involved all the different restaurants that are involved and then you can uh, download it to your phone probably the easiest way to do that so we've been doing that for a few years and it's, it always seems to be really popular i'm always surprised at how many people will go out of their way to come up from certainly your area the detroit area yeah. But other parts of the state, including Grand Rapids, which is its own beer town, and, and yeah. going down to Indiana and Illinois, there's a lot of people that come up for that. And, and it's just, it's a fun, different kind of thing. More information can be found at TraverseCity.com. And again, Traverse City Beer Week, November 11th through the 18th. Immediately after that, Traverse City transitions into the holiday season, the holiday light parade and Santa's arrival happening that Saturday, November 19th. Tell us about that festivity and uh, you know, how people can get into the holiday season in northern Michigan. Can you believe we're already talking Christmas? No. no. <laughs> it's not even Halloween yet. So I, I, don't, no, I, don't. I, don't, I don't start that till after. We don't want to push it too much. Uh, 
so there is a certain magical feel to Traverse City when you start getting the snowfall. And, you know, we're, we're getting in the forecast already. Uh, there's supposed to be some snow tonight and tomorrow. Yeah. Um, it's not a bad thing for us. Uh, the winter season up here is, is especially around the Christmas holidays, it is truly a magical time when you, when, you know, you, the, the trees lose their leaves, but they're quickly replaced by gentle snowfall that, that hits them. And you go downtown and you got the, the twinkling, uh, Christmas lights that are going on down there. You have a unique shopping area that with one of a kind shop, shops that you won't find anywhere else for you to, to go explore different things that you might want to buy for somebody for Christmas. So yeah, we have we have two things that are going on that I wanted to, to highlight. Uh, and one is the, the holiday light parade. So we have the, the tree lighting that takes place on November 19th. Can you believe that? <laughs> We're already talking about that. Um, and that's, you know, so tied into that, Certainly, we, we've got a, a, a light parade that's going on. We've got the tree lighting that goes on. Uh, and it really is a fun event, a, a great family event to go and, and watch this take place. Uh, who doesn't love a parade, even in the, in, in the middle of, uh, if it's cool out, uh, you know, that's where this place comes alive. So, uh, so through that all throughout the, the winter too, we've got um, men's night shopping downtown Traverse City. We've got ladies' night shopping downtown Traverse City. Uh, and I don't know about you, Tyler, but I am a horrible, horrible Christmas shopper. I, I, I fall into the stereotype of a guy shopping. I, it's not my favorite thing to do. So, so to go downtown Traverse City uh, when they have a men's night and yeah, there are some some brews along the way that you can you can uh, explore or go out with some buddies and, and get your Christmas shopping out of the way. Uh, again, the place to find out those locations and the different events that are going on throughout Christmas is uh, TraverseCity.com. But the whole Christmas season, you know, think about maybe a sleigh ride. There are several different places, Ranch Rudolph and Fantail out in Benzie County uh, that they have sleigh rides. They have sleigh rides at the Grand Traverse Commons. Wow. Uh, at Crystal Mountain, so many different places, and and to experience winter when when you 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 get a nice, you know, a, a chill in the air, and you've got a blanket over you, uh, and you're watching the snowfall, and you've got the horse-drawn carriage, uh, and then afterwards, you know, have some hot chocolate with the kids, or or you know, uh, maybe a hotty toddy for you, uh, you know, uh, it's a great way to. I, I like to say you don't really need to hide from winter in northern Michigan. You can embrace it. You know, whether you're doing skiing or cross-country skiing or or fat tire biking, there's a lot to do up here. And you don't have to, you don't have to hide from those activities. You can enjoy all, you know, hundreds of miles of trails. We got the new Boardman Loop Trail that we talked about last time we you and I talked. Uh, you know, you can take a fat tire bike around that anytime. Uh, all year long, and um, and we're seeing a lot of of people take advantage of all the winter activities, and there is so much to do up here. It really is all that information, all the fun activities, all throughout the year can be found at TraverseCity.com. Mike, thanks for joining us. Absolutely, my pleasure, Tyler. You have a great great uh, rest of the week. You as well. TraverseCity.com for all of that. Big thank you to all of our guests, including Mike, for joining us on today's edition of the show, as well as our crew, Jared Clark at the office of My Michigan TV, and of course, our producer, the king of television, as we call him, Larry Nyland. That's going to do it for this Monday edition of the Megacast. We'll return with a new episode on Tuesday. This is My Michigan TV. Around here, we just call it My My. This is My Michigan TV, a unique new streaming television network. To watch, simply add our app to your smartphone or smart TV. You can also watch online at mymytv.com.
My Michigan TV. My mom. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Welcome to Mackinac Island. I'm so excited to kick off the 2022 Pure Michigan summer travel season. We are here to give you some incredible ideas for your summer vacation. Well, yay. <laughs> Coming up next, Lado Live, weekdays from...